and welcome to Biz Today. I am Nazreen Ibrahim and this is your weekly edition of everything business, entrepreneurship and trending topics in the field of entrepreneurship. So today I've got a guest with me in studio who's focused on a particular industry and a concept that you may have heard of but you're also still wondering what it's about and how you can participate. Bitcoin. Is it uh, something you bite into or oh, someone's bitten a coin and thrown it away? Certainly not. This digital economy is growing around us globally and it's something that we all have access to, but uh, maybe not aware of yet. In studio, we've got Don Gray, the CEO of Adventure Capital and also a leading advocate in South Africa for Bitcoin. He'll be taking us through the journey of Bitcoin today, which was founded by, I think it may be Satoshi Nakamoto in 2008 and based on the principle of mathematics. The wonderful thing about Bitcoin is that it's decentralized. So it's a very democratic way of being able to participate in an economy. Stay tuned for more. Mr. Don Gray, welcome to Biz Today and thank you for accepting our invitation. Thank you, Nazareen. Good to be here. Wonderful. So I was saying to our viewers that you're a leading advocate in South Africa for Bitcoin. Please give us some insight into this new way of doing business or trading currency as it were. Thank you, Nazreen. Bitcoin effectively came into play around about 2008. Uh, maybe some of you who are watching will remember the time that really brought a crisis in the financial markets. And very soon after that, Bitcoin responded with a view that we want to control our own financial future. We do not want to be in a command and control environment financially where the banks dictate to us how we behave. So Bitcoin was founded and obviously like any new technology it takes time to get off the ground. Uh, to the extent that today uh, banks are now forming groups of interested people to talk about how Bitcoin is going to affect their ability to manage their financial situations. So Bitcoin <coughs> um, is being used now in a number of very interesting applications to the extent that Bitcoin is a decentralized um, currency. Bitcoin, there is no government who controls the future of Bitcoin. So the American government will not be able to control what happens in the Bitcoin play, mm -hmm. nor will the South African government. Because when I go in to buy Bitcoin, I'm going through the internet into a digital cloud where I buy Bitcoin as I would buy dollars, as I would buy, for example, in this country, rands. But I'm buying Bitcoin, which is no one can control, but yet it is used as a currency. What is a currency? Would you rather have a Zimbabwe dollar, a South African rand, or let's say a British pound? I think it was fairly clear that you would rather have a, a, British, pound. a British pound, but why? Why would you want a British pound? All it is is a piece of paper. It's the trust I have in the British pound as opposed to the trust I have in a Zimbabwean dollar. Mm. I trust that more than the other. Bitcoin now is gaining so much traction that people are saying, I will buy Bitcoin. Now, just so that you understand what I can do now, and you could do, or any of your users could do, I can set you up, you can set yourself up in 15 minutes in an offshore account with Bitcoin. That means you have a bank account overseas, as you would have a bank account locally. I have a bank account, Bitcoin bank account offshore. All I do is from my bank account in South Africa, I EFT funds, to my Bitcoin account. It allows me then with a card, because I apply for a card which arrives, which means that I have money on my Bitcoin account, allowing me to go to an ATM in South Africa, draw down cash, allow me to go to a local store, in our case, let's say, Pick and Pay or one of those right. retailers, and I can 
swipe the card as I would normally a bank card. With currencies, how would we understand if I took a South African Rand, a US dollar and a British pound and then translated that into Bitcoin? How would I know what the value of that was? Good question. This, uh, this may surprise many of you. <clears throat> if I take one Bitcoin, I have to exchange that for this morning. It was 9,600 rands mm. for one Bitcoin. Now, that's okay uh, because you can then exchange and trade in lesser amounts of Bitcoin. So if I wanted to, as I did today, pay a bill with 0 0.02 Bitcoin, it was like about 50 Rand or so, whatever, yeah. I could do that. So indeed, uh, yeah, it's, it's the value of a Bitcoin is growing. It's grown since Saturday from 9,200 Rand to 9,600 Rand. Now that is a big appreciation, almost seven, eight percent in a few days. I understand, I know why it's going like that. It does go down. But Bitcoin, like any currency, has its ups and its downs. It, it's bound to fluctuate according Correct. to the market's response to it. Correct. But also I feel positive about hearing about that because it's great that we're so conditioned to thinking about currency as a unit of one. Yeah. And if I had one rand or if I had one Correct. dollar, then I can only think about payment in terms of units of each rand and each dollar. But with Bitcoin, I can break it down, right down to the a minute percentage Correct. of its your one unit and, and trade on that. So if people start accumulating that small parts of one Bitcoin and then eventually start building each unit of a Bitcoin, their wealth seems to grow exponentially. Does that make sense? What makes even greater sense is firstly, and. Uh, let's be disruptive about this. Yes. It means that your money is off-grid. Do you know what that means? No. It means that no government will be able to get hold of it. I like the sound of that. It means that you can trade with it. And I know a company, and I will not mention that company, mm -hmm. who are now invoicing their clients in Bitcoin. So their client then pays them in a Bitcoin in a digital currency off-grid. Now, if you just think what that has and what that implies in the outcome, that is a very disruptive um, way transaction. Doing business. Correct. It's, it's almost a borderless democratic exactly. economy of doing business. <clears throat> the world is moving to a shared economy where previously you had command and control where the boss commanded and you did. Mm. You become dependent on doing what the boss wanted in terms of the rewards. This Bitcoin allows you to be independent of any authority, which in these days where you have shared economy, mm. the sharing brings the value to the currency. Would you say it's, would you liken the idea of Bitcoin? Because I, I know that you have to have um, a community of Bitcoin users and that's how it's actually Correct. developed. Mm. Is if you have this community of Bitcoin users, then it's, it's almost like you create the need for the currency exactly. there and it's able to flourish. Exactly. Would you liken it to the Stockfell approach in South Africa? Yes, yes and no. Um, a Stockfell, you're still using uh, people contributing, but you're still using what we call fiat currencies, currencies controlled by government. Mm. Um, so sh the sharing economy allows more to be done by the people sharing in that particular stock fell than if I was by myself. Yeah. So the, the stock fell is a shared uh, economy. Um, Bitcoin is a shared currency. Don, how would I go about acquiring it? I'm a young woman who is starting to build a business. I, of course, am bootstrapping my business most of the time, have limited access to funds, have a family and lots of responsibilities. So I w it's my dream to be able to build assets that serve me rather than having to work, use my physical self to work my entire life. What would this Bitcoin mean for me? And do you have examples of how it's changing people's lives? 
it's very disruptive. <clears throat> and I've said this before and I say it again. <clears throat> and if you allow me to give you one example um, of what it is that is happening at the moment. I come from a very, uh, a family whose DNA is about investment. I have a cousin who uh, works and has been very successful in re uh, fiat currency, rands and cents. Mm -hmm. His is a low risk. I'm slightly higher risk in what I'm now doing with Bitcoin. Very simply, to get a Bitcoin account, and I'll tell you right up front how I did it. So, you know, your listeners or viewers can see. I went into and now work with an organization called Bitex. South African organization owned by uh, Naspers, who now together with ten Tencent in China have a very significant place in the digital economy. Mm -hmm. I EFT to Bitex and they convert that into Bitcoins, which means I have a bank account in the digital cloud using Bitcoins. So that RAND, in my case, is converted to Bitcoins. But it's all very well having a Bitcoin account. It's like having a bank account with dollars or RANDs in it. It's not having that that's important, it's what you do with that. Okay, that's interesting for me. So please expand. What, what do you do with it? I have discovered and now work because I'm a behavioral economist by profession. Yes. The whole business of the shared economy. So I take the digital platform and invest in the digital economy in a way that gives appealing returns far greater than you would normally get in a bank and or in an investment company. But I should say that the risks are higher, but the returns are very appealing. <clears throat> I'm a bit hesitant about talking about this, but let me go for it. Right now, with the digital platform that I'm working with, the returns on the capital invested are between half a percent and one percent a day. A day? A day. And so I have managed for my clients appealing returns. Now what I say to them is I don't want you to risk your housekeeping. If you have something that allows you just to take, let's say it's 5,000, let me work it with you and let me show you what can happen. You're not going to lose your house just for a 5,000 investment. If you want, after six months, I'll give you back your money. So you effectively are at zero risk. I work then with the margin that I've generated and 5,000 Rand sitting in that account, if you'd like, over a year, you will be able to pay next year's child school fees which for a lot of people in this country is quite important. It's a massive reality, one of the first things on their to-do list. In the United Kingdom, for example, school fees are free. You don't have school fees. Basic education. Basic education. However, university fees leave a student at the end of their graduation with a noose around the neck of debt. Mm. So if effectively in the United Kingdom, if you had people investing a small amount of money, relatively small, those kids could come out of their education debt-free because it's all been paid for using the Bitcoin platform and the sharing economy. What an important conversation for us, especially in the light of the current education crisis that we're having in South Africa, which I know we could go on for hours chatting. Nazreen, if I could make one comment. Please do. I look at what's happening in our country and I say this, f the future we have here is huge. However, the only way we're going to adapt to the future is changing the way we think. Mm -hmm. It's not because we're in the doldrums. If we think creatively and disruptively, that suggestion that I suggested allows every student 
to pay for their university fees at the end of a 12-month period. Now, wouldn't that be a solution? The government would not have to raise money. No one would have to contribute more to tax to pay. An investment of, let's say, 10,000 Rand once off in Bitcoin using the sharing platform, which is not just South Africa, it's a global platform, gives you at the end of the year sufficient money to pay your school fees or your university fees. Or if you put a bit more in, pay your mortgage on your house. Mm -hmm. One off 50,000 Rand, and I'll give you an example. My business colleague has 50,000 Rand in this platform invested. He, at the end of this next, by September, no, sorry, by April next year, he will be generating $300 a day, a day, for himself personally, 30 days a month. And effectively, I have to tell you, it's about 120,000 Rand a month. $300 a day. He's only going to take $100 which is over a month, 42,000 Rand, so that the rest the is kept in the fund and it is compounded. Now, if that's not something that you, everybody can do, why not? Because grandparents sit with homes with no mortgage. Take a small part of that mortgage, invest it in the Bitcoin platform. Okay, I know how to do it, but the outcome is your grandchildren have a decent education. If you've just joined us, we're speaking with Don Gray, CEO of Adventure Capital and a leading advocate for Bitcoin, which is the currency of the digital economy globally. It's a very decentralized and democratic way of trying to build assets for yourself and for your families. And I am hopeful that I'm going to be able to do my first investment before the 2016 year is out. I think it's a wonderful opportunity. Stay with us. We're continuing this conversation when we come back.